Welcome to the latest episode of SOLIDWORKS for Creo Parametric Users. In this video, we're going to take a look at sketching, and if you know how to sketch in Creo, well, sketching in SOLIDWORKS should not be an issue for you. Let's start off by creating a brand new part, and part is selected. Let's click the OK button. Again, one difference that you'll notice is that you do not define the name when you start off the part. You do that when you save it. Let me go to the little eyeball in the menu and let's turn on the display of the primary planes just so I can select something to sketch on. I'm going to create two sketches in this video. First, let's create a racetrack shape on the top plane. I will select it and then from the toolbar that opens up, let's click on the sketch icon. And it rotates so that we are looking normal to the top plane. I'm going to start off by creating a rectangle. Here we have the rectangle command. From the drop down list, you can see that there are five different kinds that you can choose from. I'm using the center rectangle. I'm going to move my mouse so that it gets to the center and locks in there. I'm going to drag out the rectangle to some size. Let's go to the eyeball again and turn off the display of the primary planes. And you'll notice that all the entities are in blue. That means that the sketch is under constraint. Let me hit the check mark to finish out of the rectangle command. And so one difference that you'll get used to is that you don't get the weak dimensions like you have in Creo. You just get the blue indicating that the sketch is under constraint. Before I start throwing in some dimensions, let's put some fillets in here. Here's the sketch fillet command. Oops, let me click right on it. And here it tells you that you can select a vertex or entities to fill it. So that's another small difference. In Creo Parametric, you would select, say, two lines. Here you can also select a vertex. You can see a preview of it. I'm just going to continue selecting the four vertices that I want to use. And here we have our dimension. I'm going to crank this up to 50, make it nice and big. And now let's hit the check mark. Let's throw in some other additional dimensions. Here we have the command that's called smart dimension. I'm going to dimension from here to over there just with some left mouse clicks and then left click over here. Now we get the little window that allows us to type in the value that we want to use. I'm going to make this a value of 320. And it's hard to tell, but some of these entities have actually turned black because they are constrained. Let me select these two entities and then click here. And the little window opens up. Let me type in a value of 160. That's good. My entire sketch is black meaning that everything is constrained. Let me hit the little check marks, get out of the dimension command. And then here we have the check mark that allows us to complete the sketch. And now let's create a, another sketch. Here we have a sketch tab. From here you can choose if you want to create a new sketch. I'm going to turn on my primary plane display. All right, so let's click on the sketch command. Now it prompts me to select a plane that I want to sketch on. Let's select the plane called right. And now we can start creating the different entities that we want. And for this one, I am going to create a point that intersects with the line here, just so I can create some center lines for sketching. Here is the point command. And I can like try to eyeball it. It's not getting exactly where I want it to be. Let's then, let's see, what do I want to do? Let's go here, and now I'm going to add some relations so that this ends up being a Pierce relation. And again, relations in SOLIDWORKS are like constraints in Creo Parametric. So here is the add relation command, and I will select this line, and then let's select this point. Oops, looks like I already had the point selected. Let me try that again. Let's just go clear the selections. I need to pay a little bit more attention to what I am doing. Let me select this point. And here under relations, here we have the pierce point that will put it at the intersection of the line and my sketch plane. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. Let's unclutter the screen. 
by turning off the display of the primary planes. And now, you notice that we get a little ghosting of the planes still sort of appearing. If I go to the drop down for the line command, here is the center line. Let me click on it and here you can see that it is snapping into the location of the pierce point. Let me just drag it a certain distance and hit the escape key. So there you can see my first center line. Then let's go to create the second center line. And it's snapping into the pierce point. And that's good. Let's hit the escape key. And now I'm going to change so that I'm looking right at my sketch plane. Let's go to the view cube. And I'm just going to select the face that I want to be looking at. Now I'm going to make an eye shape. Let's go to the line command. And you'll notice that it is the keyboard shortcut of L. There you can see the little tooltip going. And let's create our different lines. Let's sketch here, here. And you're getting these sort of like inferencing lines that allows you to lock things in. And the only thing to notice that, know about that really is that that is not going to actually end up adding the different relations. So I'm going to have to add the relations that I want in order to get everything to finish. And I accidentally missed the location here. No problem. If you go to the trim entities command, uh, here we have the ability to corner two entities. So let me select these two. And there we have it. Creating a closed loop. Let's hit the check mark. And now in order to get this all black so that it is fully constrained. Well, I always like to add my constraints first in Creo Parametric. So that's going to be the relations in SolidWorks. So let's select this line and then this line and then this line and this line. And for those four lines, I want them to be equal. That's good. And now let me clear the selection so I can select this line and this line and this line and this line and let's make those equal and let me then select let's see this line and this line i want those to be equal and now let's then put in some symmetry and so for symmetry you can select your center line and then in Creole Parametric, you can select the vertices only, but here in SolidWorks, we can select lines and make the lines symmetric as well. That is starting to get into shape. Let's then make some symmetry here. Let's see this and this and this. Let's throw some symmetry in there. And let's see another one that I want. Let's grab this and make these two symmetric as well. I think that's pretty good for my relations. Let's throw in some dimensions. And so I want the width of this line. Let's make this one a value of 30. And then let's control, say, the height of this. That's much bigger than I want. Let's change that to a value of 4. And again, because of my relations, it automatically adjusted the other entities. Let's do the dimension from here to here. And I'm going to make this one bigger. Let's change it to a value of 40. And one last dimension. You can see that we still have a couple of blue lines here. Let's select the distance between them. And let's change this to a value of 6. And everything is in black. Everything is fully constrained. Let's hit the check mark to complete out of sketch mode. And so now I've got two different sketches in my model. So I can use these for creating features. Oh, by the way, I notice here that there's a little minus sign inside of my sketch. Let me just go to edit sketch. And this happens sometimes where, you know, it gives you an indication that it is not fully constrained as they would say in Creo Parametric. If you go to the drop down list for displaying or deleting the relations, here we have a little button that will fully define the sketch. Let's hit the check mark out of the property manager. There are a whole bunch of other different entities on the screen, a little cluttered, but 
that's okay. My sketch is now fully constrained. And so, for example, I can go to the Features tab, and then maybe I want to take something and then extrude it. So let's grab this, and you can see a preview, and we can grab the dragger to make the length longer if we want to. So now that we have the sketches, we can use the sketches for creating different features. I'm actually not going to create that boss extrude, but there you have it. There is a bit of an intro to sketching in SolidWorks if you are a Creole Parametric user.